Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Uppy Dietitians podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the pod. We've got another story time for you guys today. We are bringing it back to our internship days, which this was a time where Emily and I didn't really see each other very much. So not a lot of Emily stories for this time, except for, I guess, Fincy. Um, but other than that, we were doing our own thing. We can kind of set the scene like we did last time, I guess. Would that be a good place to start, you think? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I can start. I was still at Purdue. Um, I did Purdue's coordinated program. If you're not familiar with dietetic internships, it is sort of like your clinicals after you finish your undergrad. Um, it's a little different for Emily because she did do her master's at the same time. So she'll explain that. But during mine, I did produce coordinated program. So after you finish your four years ish of undergrad classwork, before you actually graduate, you do like another year. And that is like your internship. And today we're going to go over like what we did and how we navigated that during the pandemic, because we did both do our internships, like during that exact time, it was kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, that was the scene for me. I was going through Purdue's program, but I was living in Fort Wayne most of the time. Yes. I, like Hannah said, I was in my internship, which is like clinicals rotations while also doing my master's. And I don't think I was in Illinois during then living with family save that money and rent. Um, but it was just kind of like doing classes in the evening and going to rotations during the day. And yeah, I feel like we can just kind of get right into it because yeah, it doesn't get that much more exciting than school and going to clinical. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the craziest part about it for us was that we were doing it during the pandemic. So like for me, how it lined up was I started in August of 2019 and I had my community rotation, which lasted for about three weeks. And I was at a local hospital, like doing community events and stuff. And then I had food service at the big hospital, which I also did clinicals at. Um, but then clinicals started in the spring semester. So January, 2020 to paint the scene. So like right before like everything shut down and it was like right before I got to staff relief and staff relief is where you like take over some of the patients that the RDs are seeing. So I actually never did, well, wait, I did one week of staff relief. I think, I think I had three scheduled, but like it was March when it was getting to that time. And I remember like, I got an email from my preceptor saying like, it's up to you balls in your court. Like there's this like virus. <laughs> if you want to uh, like work from home, you can, or you can stay. And obviously I was like, I work at a giant hospital. I'm not going to risk staying here where it likely is going to be huge here. It's like the biggest hospital in the area. Um, I remember too, like before March, like I <clears throat> would go to rounds with the dietitians and like, there would be doctors in the rounds, like talking about it. And it was like very scary. Cause we had no idea, obviously what was going on. Did you ever have that where you heard like from other providers, like talking about it, Emily? A little bit. Yeah. I think it was like, we were kind of like all, I don't want to say, not want to say we were in denial, but we were like, oh yeah. Like, but then like the more and more we started hearing about it, it was like the more isolation rooms there were like the more yeah. like heavily, I don't want to say guarded. They were not being guarded, like heavily <laughs> secluded. They were as it was, but like I remember in January, like 2020, like we were hearing about it in like China and I was like, oh, this is just a virus. Like it's another sickness, like, mm -hmm. and they seem to be handling it well. So it won't come here. Come oh, well. March, 2020 and our entire like world changed, at least in the US. I wasn't really tracking other countries that well. 
what rotation were you in during like March, 2020? I was in clinicals. Okay. And my program, how it looked was like June, 2019 is when I started, but it was just like classes. There were no rotations. I don't even think I started my first rotation till fall 2019. I think it was food service, but my, our big one was clinicals. It was supposed to be 12 weeks and I was at the biggest trauma hospital in the South side of Chicago, which is like a very cool experience. Like crazy things you're seeing all the time. So like, it was a really great rotation. And I remember I was like sitting on my bed doing whatever. And I got a call from my preceptor and she was like, Hey, they're closing down all like internship programs like any type of students like no one is allowed like they didn't even get me like give me like the option they were like do not come in tomorrow or the next day or the next day (laughs) after that (laughs) and I was like okay and then I was like of course me being me I like I always left my lab coat there so I was like (laughs) when can I pick up my lab coat (laughs) and she was like we'll figure out a time in the future, like jump ahead a year. That That's when I literally went back. It's like, they <laughs> had my lab coat at the hospital and in my head. I was like, is it getting on the lab coat? Like it's been in this disease. Oh area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. Cause like, that's what we think of too. And like, do we have to like wear different clothes to the hospital mm-hmm. and then like change when we get home? Like even like before, like I got sent home, that's what we were all talking about inside the office was like, Do we have like work shoes and then home shoes? Like it was just so unknown. Yeah, it was definitely, I feel like it started settling in when like I would go into like isolation rooms where like it might happen and I'd be like full PPE'd up and like the gown, the gloves, mask, Mm -hmm. face shield. And then I remember the the memes were very good good around this time. (laughs) Like despite the, the dire situation, um, at least from a dietitian standpoint, the means were good. Where like, I would be told to see a patient who like potentially had COVID, and my the dietitians were like, "Do not go in that room and see them." Like, and I remember, do you know the the video of Jim from the office where he's like looking looking through, through the glass? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I saw a meme and it was like dietetic interns trying to do their nutrition focused physical exam yes. <laughs> and it was I like, saw that exact meme that's so funny that. and for reference if you don't know what that is essentially in order to assess for malnutrition like there's certain parts of the body we touch for like the test for like fat or muscle loss but obviously if you cannot go into a room with a patient you cannot really tell where like potentially there's like lack of fat deposits or muscle mass so we were kind of just like staring at them like does it look <laughs> like they're like temples might be a little bit caved what is in? in between your fingers <laughs> like what's going on on your hands <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was definitely wild I feel like it also this is like such a small detail But it like really confused me at the start of the pandemic. I don't know if you noticed this because you were also like in in the clinical setting, but everyone in the hospital referred to it as COVID. And then, but everyone else in the world, like on the news, like just general conversation was calling it coronavirus. So I was like, so I didn't know how to spell coronavirus. This is such, (laughs) of course you didn't. (laughs) This is just very on brand for me. <laughs> oh my God. This is so funny. So like, I remember I was at a friend's house and it was some like game where like you, you link up your phone to the TV and like you mm-hmm. input things. And like one of the responses like had to do with coronavirus. And I like tried to, t- I tried to type it out and I typed it incorrectly because I and then I got so much hate from all my friends who are like Emily <laughs> literally this is all people are talk- talking about and you can't even spell it right I'm like sorry in the hospital we all write COVID no one writes coronavirus in the hospital 
This is so very aspartame all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A very minor detail, but I was like, this is what the healthcare professionals are saying. So that's what I'm going to call it. Yeah. We called it COVID too. And actually I shouldn't make fun of you because I actually, for a long time, like when I was, I don't even know, maybe like four until like third or fourth grade, I lived in a place called Corona, Indiana, tiny town. Like if you guys know where that is, I want to be your friend because there's no way you like, you know what that is very small town. Um, and so it's spelled differently than coronavirus. So I also didn't know how to spell Oh, coronavirus man. for a while because I thought it was the same as Corona, Indiana, which is very different. So I, I shouldn't yeah. judge, but it is very on brand for you to <laughs> not quite yes. know how to spell that. <laughs> yeah. We probably look so silly. They're like, wow, these two are literally like in healthcare <laughs> and <laughs> they're know. selling this virus wrong. I've like always but. referred to it as COVID because of that. Obviously now I I'm very well aware of what coronavirus is, but yeah, it was always COVID in my head too. Yeah. So it's just also, it was shorter. I yeah. was like so long. Yeah. What did you, what did you do after then? Like, what did you do my, after clinicals? So my clinicals got cut off four weeks early, which like was a very awkward conversation to have in job interviews when I was like, yeah. They're like, tell me about your internship during COVID. And then they always ask, did you complete the entire thing? And I'm like, no, I did not. I am not a real dietitian. (laughs) I was kicked out because I was a student. And luckily, I only missed NICU and neonatal, really. I don't work with any babies. Mm -mm. I don't think I've ever planned to work with any babies. So I I hate that rotation. I like wanted to see it just because I feel like I knew nothing. So I thought it would be cool, but I don't know. Mm. I missed both my weeks of staff relief. So, so yeah. who's to say if I'm qualified to be a dietitian? Who's to say? <laughs> but yeah, I had, I, most of my classes were online anyway. So like, oh, that yeah. didn't change really at all, but I forget. Did you, did you walk at graduation? I did not. So for whatever reason, this is a personal pet peeve of mine Mm. because I like being validated for what I do. Yeah. (laughs) Benedictine's internship, like they normally just have a little party at the end of their program and that's it. Bitch, I have a master's degree is what I would have said. Like (laughs) I need more of their party. I was like, okay. Um, so we didn't even have the party. So it was like one of those like un- very unceremonious turn in my last assessment. Closed your laptop. And closed my laptop. And I now have a master's degree. Yeah. Yeah. It was very uneventful. And I will not hold my sister sister to this because she does not owe me anything but she told me she's currently in she's currently in a doctorate program but she'll definitely get a master's at least and she told me that I can wear her master's hood oh take a picture now (laughs) that's honestly all I wanted was the little hood (laughs) and a little picture I was like did not get that I was like very upset because my program was finished in December, right? Because it was a year and a half, but everyone yeah. else who was two years in like, because no, I know like Rush and I was more familiar with the Illinois programs, like Rush's program had a ceremony in May of 2021 and all those dietetic interns got to wear their hoods and everything. And I was very jealous. Yeah. Yeah. But- yeah, I didn't walk either, but honestly, I didn't care. That's like not something I'm worried about. I'm not the kind of person who even like, I probably wouldn't have gone to graduation even if I could have, because I'm yeah. just like not the kind of person to really care about that kind of stuff. But same, it was like a Wednesday or something. I turned in my last assignment, which for me, I like had clinicals, which I missed the very end of for staff relief. And then 
my last rotation, I was supposed to shadow with a sports dietitian, but I couldn't because it was at the same hospital system that my clinicals were, and they were no longer taking interns at that point because of COVID. And so mm-hmm. instead I spent the last, I think it was like seven weeks or so from like April until May. So yeah, only like, I guess four or six weeks until graduation. Um, I was working on writing, uh, I call them articles, I guess, for what is the name of the thing I was doing? It's like a nutrition care manual, oh, sort of. Yeah. But like for the state. Yeah. So I was like writing articles on like nutrition therapy for, I did like one on like HIV. I did a lot of like research for like transplant therapy. So I forgot all that information by now, but I learned a lot about like organ transplants. So that was interesting, but yeah, I spent the last few weeks just mm-hmm. like doing that, which looking back, I should have been more grateful for it because it's like exactly what I like to do is just be at home and like typing, typing on my laptop. I don't know why I didn't appreciate that more. <laughs> um, but same, I like finished my last assignment, closed my laptop. And then I was a graduate. And what was weird about my situation too, was I actually got married right before COVID happened. So uh, I was also navigating like all of that. And Ross and I like went from being long distance to living together to COVID where we like spent all of our time together for a while. So that was very interesting. <laughs> it's like, very yeah. interesting. Um, That's such an extreme switch. Yeah, it was, it was wild. We were like long distance for what, like five years. And then we got married in November of 2019 and then March, 2020, we were stuck together for like eight weeks straight. (laughs) So I'm pretty sure he got shut down from work too, for a while. So we were just there. And we also got Finn during that time. We got Finn on February 20, I think it was the 29th because leap year, February 29th of 2020. So like right before everything happened. Oh my gosh. That feels so long ago. I know. I feel like we've lost like two years of our life at least. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then I started working like actually before graduation. So graduation weekend, which I didn't go to, but it was like early May and Mm -hmm. I started working my full-time clinical job outpatient like the week before that. So they were like really needing someone. So I started even before (laughs) I was a graduate, which I don't think is really allowed, but I had to like get a note from my preceptor or my, um, internship director that I was like gonna graduate to like verify to my employer that (laughs) I was good to go it was crazy you're okay yeah did you wait so you graduated 2020 May 2020 yeah so you were were there like any restrictions from a work standpoint oh work was so I know this is supposed to be about the internship no but there's not a lot to say about that I'm curious Yeah. So that was crazy. So I worked at a outpatient clinic and there at that time, along with me, there were three other outpatient dietitians, which is crazy now because I no longer work there. But when I left recently, there was like six or seven of us. So it's just like grown like crazy. But anyway, there were three others plus me And one of them, Amy, shout out to Amy. She was the only one who got stuck training me. So everyone else was working from home for a while, but she had to come into the office, into the clinic. And like, it was just me and her and like a couple other staff members for like, I don't even know, maybe a couple months. Oh my Um, Because Amanda was on maternity leave. So she was out. And then the other one, Jenna, she was working from home. So it was like literally just me and Amy for a while. And a couple other members like, front desk and like one of the MAs or something. And then eventually everyone came back in. But when I first started, Amy and I were seeing patients like all virtually, like either telephone or like video visits. So I felt so bad for her because she was stuck like with me in the office and we were still doing virtual. So she like very easily could have been at home. So bless, bless her heart. But then everyone came back. And then of course we had to wear masks for I mean, it wasn't until probably maybe early this year that we finally lifted our mask policy at the hospital inpatient and outpatient. So it was, it was weird for a while. Like I didn't know 
how to work without a mask for a while. Like it was, it was pretty crazy. And we still did some video visits, but we finally allowed patients to come in. I don't know exactly. I wish I did, but I think it was May, June, July. It was probably around like Thanksgiving ish time of 2020. And then at that point, I know there was like weird insurance stuff that was happening. And so for a while they like banned us from doing video visits because insurance like stopped covering them. Of course, we're like, why would you do that when people like are safer in their homes, but whatever. And so for a while, like we weren't even allowed to do video visits, but then that got changed as video became just like more popular. I think insurances were like, okay, fine. We'll adjust to the new world we're living in. But yeah, it was pretty crazy for a while. When I first started, it was literally like three of us in the office for a few months until everyone came back. Poor Amy had to come in. Poor Amy, (laughs) but we really bonded. Amy and I are like good friends now because we had all that time, like just the two of us when I first started. That's true. I feel like one of the biggest things we hear with the internship is like, or not internship, but the pandemic is like people who like students lack certain experience because of that and I was thinking about that and I was like I think the only rotations for myself that I missed out were like community yeah um I was able to do my long-term care what like I just had to like mask up and everything and that was near the end of 2020 so like they were kind of figuring out PPE by then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like, honestly, I wouldn't say it, it was a lack of experience. I feel like everyone just mental health took a huge toll. And exactly. Like, like I didn't even do long-term care. Like I wasn't even like part of my plan. So like, I didn't miss out on that because of COVID. I missed out on that because it just wasn't something I was required to do. And I feel like that is maybe a flaw with the internship process is that everyone's program is so different but at the same time I think that's good because there's so many fields of dietetics not everyone wants to do the exact same rotations so I think I don't think that's a valid excuse either to say like oh you're not a good candidate for this job because your internship was during COVID and so you got less experience like it's also nine months to two years out of your entire career you're not going to get all of the experience you need. Like that's so, that's so minimal. I have learned so much in the last like three years being an actual dietitian, so much more than I ever learned, obviously during my nine months as an intern pandemic or not. Yeah. It feels very silly. I was like, I don't know. It just seems like an excuse to like not hire people. That's what it felt like. I don't know. Well, you ended up working at one of the places you I got really lucky. Like I literally, I I knew my preceptor who is now my boss at the hospital. And she basically was like, there are these positions to apply for. It was like March or April, I started applying. And so then my preceptor like knew me and everything. And so I was able to just get a job and get in like, even before I graduated, like I said. So I got really lucky with that. I know that's not everyone experience, including yours. Yeah. I think it's just, I don't think this speaks on the pandemic, but it's just like frustrating how it doesn't count toward your experience. How like, they're right. like, oh, your internship doesn't literally like in job interviews, it'll be like, how many years of experience do you have? And it'll be in parentheses, your internship does not count toward this. And I was like, like which is it? Like, is it experience you need to have or does it not matter at all? Like, pick a lane. Yeah. Like, what is this? It's not like we are like shadowing. We are legitimately like doing 40 hour weeks, like on the floors. Yeah. If, but yeah, it's just so annoying. I'm glad I like also like looking for a job during the pandemic was awful. I was like, no one's hiring or everyone, all the dietitians are changing positions because they're realizing the lack of like job security there is or Mm -hmm. how much they don't like it um, or how poorly their employer is like handling COVID, whatever it is. Um, But I'm just glad we're past that now. I feel Mm -hmm. for anyone who like is looking for a job because that is just a terrible, terrible, terrible process. That like first year after graduation, like, again, I will, 
I was lucky enough to have a job, but even navigating just that time from going from being a student for your entire life to like working, it's so weird. It's so different. And like, it is nice. We don't have homework. That is nice. <laughs> <laughs> we just have other responsibilities that we have put on ourselves because yeah. <laughs> that is who we are. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. It was like a really tough time. And I feel like obviously it was like, I don't know. No, like, I don't know if I want to say milestone. It was like a very influential event that everyone underwent and it brought up a lot of concerns like mental health and like infection control, the amount of people that don't know how to like wash their hands correctly, like stuff like that, that. that. Yeah. Like was good that it was brought up, but it was, I don't know. It's like tough to look back on. I'm glad we're out of it. Yeah. I hope we never experience that again. I did see a TikTok recently. It was like AI predictions of the next like five years and they predicted another pandemic. And I was like, scroll, scroll, denial, yeah. denial. <laughs> we're going to not, ma- we're not going to put that out in the universe. <laughs> yeah. But at least we're not students anymore. That was just so weird. And I, I wonder how it was for those like starting college in 2020. I know that was a whole thing too. Like having to like start being a virtual student. If you did go to like somewhere like Purdue where you likely were moving. I just so yeah. weird. Yeah. I think my sister, she graduated 2022. So she started 2018 then. Mm. I think she like. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because she would be a freshman when I was a senior. Um, She like lost a ton of her college time because of COVID. Yeah. And it like sucks a lot if you think about it. That really sucks because that was like when we became friends, like that's like such a peak part of your life for so many people. And you could have easily lost at least two years with the pandemic because of it. Oh, man. Sorry to be like talking about a sad subject. God. (laughs) We need a happy story time. We've done our failing a class. We've done our depressing internships. Yeah. Next story time will be happy. It'll be good. What is our next story time? I'm kind of curious. I Um, do not know. Oh, I think it's our season finale. How we decided to become dietitians. That's not good either. That's when I had disordered eating. (laughs) I was going to say, I don't know if that. I don't know. That, that's great either. That's okay. Mm. We're just being real with you. We'll guys. figure something out. <laughs> At least the next one after this. Oh, the next episode after this one will be positive. That one's fun. And then we're getting into should I spoil it? Yeah, you can spoil or should it. I save it? You can spoil it. Okay. After that, we're gonna talk about our Enneagrams and how in our profession or no, no, our unprofessional Enneagram opinions on like how disordered eating might correlate to the different Enneagram types. Again, we are not Enneagram experts. <laughs> we are dietitians, no. but we're not Enneagram experts. So that will no. just be our like own personal take on all that, but that'll be fun. Something new for you guys to hear about. Yes. I don't know what else I have to add. How are you feeling? Yeah. I think that is all I really wanted to say reminiscing and maybe saying, uh, we feel you. If you also went through a similar experience, you are seen and heard and understood. <laughs> Yeah. And we're glad you made it out. And this will just hopefully always be a good experience you can go back on is whenever anyone's like, when did you face adversity? You can just say, I completed my internship during the pandemic. And then that's quite a lot of adversity you're facing. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for listening, guys, to our very (laughs) non-traditional career path that COVID decided to grow at us. We hope you enjoyed today's story time. Don't know if the next story time will be super positive. (laughs) We've got a long time till then. Lots of positive stuff coming before then. (laughs) Yes. So it'll be good. You'll have time to decompress and take some slow breaths (laughs) after listening to this. (laughs) Um, Definitely go we're going to go record the bonus question. Go 
listen to the beat deets. I'm excited for this episode for this bonus question a lot. It'll be good. Me too. All right, guys. Bye, we'll see you next guys. week. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of the Upbeat Dietitians with your host, Emily Krause and Hannah Thompson. We appreciate you all so much for continuing to support us. In order to support us and sustain the success of this podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to provide us feedback for future episodes and guest stars, follow us on Instagram at the Upbeat Dietitians. Lastly, you can show us support by providing a monthly donation using the link at the end of our bio. Once again, thank you so much for listening today and stay tuned next Wednesday for a new episode. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.